evening all. How are you guys doing? Are you sure? It's a blessing. Let's rise to our feet. We want to pray. We want to pray. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will be glad and rejoice in it. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, I don't know about you, but I feel like I've had a pretty interesting week. Um, I didn't know if I was going to share this or not, but I felt like my week was pretty tough. And um, I don't know what I was struggling with, but I just felt like it was tough. And um, who, who here feels like, am I holding it the wrong way? Is that okay? Okay, powerful. Minor corrections. But who here feels like sometimes life can be a bit tough? Yeah, lift up, let me see. Life can be a bit tough, yeah. And during the week, it's like I even struggled to pray. But I remembered, or the Holy Spirit rather reminded me that he has given us help. Amen. He has given us help. And the help can be found in Jude chapter 1, verse 20. When all else fails, we have the help of the Spirit. Jude chapter 1, verse 20. He says that, but you, beloved, building up yourselves in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praying in the Holy Ghost. When all else fails, you have the gift to pray in the Holy Spirit. When all else fails, when you don't know what to do, you can still speak in tongues. The Holy Spirit is always available to send help and to help you. Amen. So that's what we want to do right now. We want to help ourselves and build ourselves up right now. Charge ourselves by speaking in tongues. No prayer point, no agenda, just connecting. Because it's interesting, in order to try and connect to God, you must try and speak in his language. Try and reach to him. Lord, as the, the Bible said that as the deer pants for water, so does my soul. Your soul can't speak, but it can groan. It's like, ah, I need him. Now is the time to need him. Now is the time to express. So let's just lift up our voices. No agenda, no prayer topic. Just Rabba Shakata di Basonte Vene Casataya. Zipande le manso vina capane zeko talima nandali yabandia la manto ke vene katusa ha. Isho kapalina mandelia da manto remensa cabano ticalia mande. E peseko talima la mande le keti anda baha. Lord, right now we recognize our weakness. We recognize our frailty. We recognize that we need help. We need sufficiency. We need, we need support. We need support. Right now we ask your God for the Holy Spirit. Lord, we look unto you. We call unto you. We cry unto you. Lord, we look unto the hills from whence our help comes from. And we ask, oh God, for help, oh God. Lift up your voice and pray. Lift up your voice and call unto your God right now in this moment. Though we are many, we stand as individuals and we call unto our God. Come on, come on, come on, come on. The Bible says, lifting up your hands without wrath, without doubting. Surrender yourself unto your maker. Surrender yourself unto your maker. Lord, we are grateful. Lord, our posture is one of thanksgiving. Our posture is one of thanksgiving. Let our soul and everything that is within us give thanks unto your holy name. Give thanks unto you. Lord, if everything, with everything we give thanks. With everything we say thank you. With everything, Lord, we are grateful. Rapayanda la bashaka tayanda maha. Repeyanda lo. Rabande ke pania namango. Shabale telia panamanga. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, pray. Pray. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. This is your time. This is your time. Few more seconds. Few more seconds. Yeah. Rabam. Rabam. Rapayanda la mantali ambaha. Rapayanda la mantoli akapa. Rabayanda la baba. Rabayanda la baba. Rasoke tali anda maha. Father, we thank you. 
thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for what you're doing in our lives. We thank you that we gathered here today, Lord, and we didn't do it in vain. Thank you that where two or three are gathered in your name, there you are in the midst of us. We pray for our hearts right now that we pray that we may be sensitive. Help us to be sensitive, Lord, that when you are in the room, we come against every distraction. We come against every distraction, oh God. We pray that we may be able to receive from you tonight. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I had just one more prayer topic. Just one more. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 16, it says that, I cease not to give thanks for you. I what? I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. So right now, I feel in my spirit that we should make mention of our pastor. Make mention of Pastor John in our prayers. For the next 60 seconds, only 60, maybe 90, depending on how you're feeling. Make mention of Pastor John. Again, the prayer topic is, Father, we lift up our pastor into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, right now we just lift up our pastor. We thank you for his life. We thank you for the grace upon his life. Because the Bible says that in Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 19, it says that out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and a voice of them that make merry and I will multiply them and they shall not be few. I will also glorify them and they shall not be small. And that means that whatever you pray about and you say thank you for, that thing in particular becomes multiplied. So we want to pray for the grace of God on Pastor John, that it may be multiplied, that we may receive and also benefit. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Lift up your voices. Father, in the next 60 seconds, we lift up our pastor into your hands. And we pray that your will will be done. We pray that the grace upon his life be multiplied. We pray for a greater measure, another supply, a fresh supply of the Spirit come upon him. In Jesus' name, pray. Pray, pray right now. Lift up your voices. Repandala masoki vanadoshi andabaha. Reban seke teli andabasore mendoli akapa. Raba seke bali andala basota. Reba yadaba. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We give you thanks. Ah uh -huh. 
Yeah. 
wait for you
said, I am a child of God. See, my sins did not scare you. My mess ups don't scare you. Before the earth's foundation was laid, you died for me, Jesus. I'm here to say, Lord, we're grateful. Lord, I'm grateful. Lord, I'm grateful. Lord, I'm grateful. Say, Lord, I'm grateful. 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 Circumstances. 
Jesus a big shout of praise. Praise him in this house. Kadosh, Kadosh, you're the Lamb of God who sits upon the throne. Holy are you. There is none like you, none beside you, none above you, no one like you. We praise that name in this house. Jesus, are you tired? Are you tired? We have amazing things happening tonight. Pastor Keith is in the house. Honor him, give him a round of applause. We love having him. You can take your seats for the moment. I want you just to give the worship team a round of applause. We love you, Pastor Ade. We love you, band. We love you, team. Awesome. So I just want to share a few announcements taking place before Pastor Keith comes up to preach. Is there anyone new in the house, new tonight, new at Elon Wimbledon? Welcome, welcome. Give them a round of applause. We welcome you here. There are, sorry? I saw them earlier. Um, okay, so there are three ways of getting connected. I will wait, there we go, Woo. well done. Shout out to Mama P on the words. <laughs> so there are three ways of getting connected. Scan the QR code, um, fill out a card, fill out your name and number. What, you'll ha what will happen is you'll receive a call in the next couple of weeks, just welcome you into the church, telling you about what's taking place. Um, if, you haven't, if, you're, if you've been in the church for a while and haven't done that, I encourage you to do that. Um, you get a one-to-one -one phone call, any questions that you haven't had answered, gets answered, etc., etc. <clears throat> the second one is register to our next Growth Track course. Our next one is on the 13th of April from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Lunch is included, and it's a great way to learn about our beliefs, our vision. We also um, uh, uh, do activities where you discover your gifts and talents, um, and then you can find a way of using them in the church, and we can provide that for you. Um, the third um, point, go back to the I'm new slide, please. Thank you. Join a hub, small group, and serving team. Serving teams, you will be provided um, through Growth Track. So when you've done Growth Track, um, you can then be put into a serving team. But our hubs are small gatherings in different locations. Um, if you want to know more about that, um, find one of our team members with a lanyard after um, they will tell you more about that and also if you scan the QR code and fill out your name and number you will also find more details about that once you do that and growth track so it's a, a win-win on one and two situation lovely can I um, on the 12th yes yes 12th of April we have games and curry night this is a men's event any men in the house yeah. You men are so quiet. But um, Games of Curry Night on the 12th of April, it's going to be amazing. We have pool tables coming in and a bunch of other games set up, and it's going to be a really good night for you. I'm a little bit jealous when the orders are coming in, but it'll be good. Get on involved in that. I think the um, it's on Eventbrite. If you go on Eventbrite, search up Elon Wimbledon. All our events come up, and so you can sign up to that um, here in the building. On the 14th of April, which is next Sunday, we have Dave Campbell in the house, um, uh, the leader of Elam um, organization. Um, great pastor, you don't want to miss it. 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. Um, and the next one, Warrior, any ladies in the house? <laughs> represent, represent. Uh, Warrior Brunch, get out of your comfort zone. I know this morning there was only 15 tickets left. Whether that's the case now, I don't know. Okay. Get them quick. It's on Eventbrite. Again, if you search up Elon Wimbledon, all our events come up. Um, get involved in this. It's from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Our last one was incredible. You don't want to miss this one. We have some goodie surprises on the 20th of April. Um, be there if you can. Amen. Uh, April 21st, we have Becky Murray in the house. Um, she leads a, um, a ministry called One by One, and she's amazing. Last time she came, I know she preached a fire word, and so I'm expecting great things. 21st of April, 
And then on the 28th of April, we have Emmanuel Smith in the house. He's here just for the 11 a.m. service, um, but he is incredible. I was with him in Germany, and he is fire. There's such an anointing on his life. So if you can be there, be here. Amen. Awesome. So we're now going to take our tithes and offerings. Um, scan the QR code if you want to give. Um, the baskets are going to come up um, if you want to give by cash or in the envelopes in front of you. Um, and so I'm just going to pray um, while we do that. So, Father, I just pray right now in the name of Jesus that you just touch every one of us tonight, that there will be a sense of freedom and power in the room. Lord, I pray that you'll begin to speak to people about what to sow, that you'll bless them beyond measure. Lord, I pray that there'll be such a, a, a running river of um, of faith to flow in this room tonight. Lord, I pray that there'll be an atmosphere of giving in a, a, in a joyful way, giving in a joyful sound, giving in um, a way like no other, that it's going to be a faith-filled room. Lord, I pray that even as people sow it, um, what they, what, so what they're sowing tonight, that they'll be blessed a hundredfold. Lord, I pray that there'll be um, testimonies of what they're tithing, what they're, what they're offering to the, unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So I want to invite you to come up. If you, if you scan the QR code, just come and tap your phone um, or cash or envelopes, just come up. Well, it is my privilege to invite Pastor Keith to come and preach. I want you to rise to your feet and honor him as he comes up. We love you. We appreciate you. Come on, let's just um, give me 60 seconds and just give thanks to God right now. Can you just open up your mouth and just say thank you to God? Just, just glorify him in your own ways. Come on, lift up your voice and just say, thank you, Jesus. Father, we give you praise tonight, Lord God. We give you thanks. We give you honor. Lord, we say, Lord, that you are a good God. Come on. Lord, you are a good God. If he's been good to you this week, I want you to begin to declare his goodness. If he's been good to you today, declare his mercy. If you've been good to you this month, declare his goodness over your life. The Bible says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow thee. So right now, Father God, we magnify your name. Lord, we glorify your name. Lord, your word says, uh, forget not your benefit, Father God. So Lord, tonight we acknowledge uh, that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, Father God. There is no one beside you, my God. So Lord, we magnify your name, O oh God. The Alpha and the Omega, Lord, we glorify you because you are sovereign, you are majestic. Lord, you are merciful and you are just. Lord, that is who you are. That is who you are. Lord, you are the deliverer, the restorer, the redemption worker, Father God. Lord, you restore my life. You are the creator, the prophet, the scribe, the will that was within a will. Lord, you are that God, my Lord. Lord, you are Aaron's staff, my God. Lord, you are... You are the Gideon's fleas, Father God. Lord, you are everything. You are all in all, Father God. Lord, that is who you are, my God. So we want to say thank you. We want to glorify you and magnify you, oh God. Lord, we bless you, Jesus. Come on. Can, I, I don't feel like stopping. Can we just bless him? Can we just bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him? The Bible declares that in the praises of his people, he abides. And I don't know who needs God to abide in your presence right now. I don't know what you need from God right now, but as you begin to praise Him, I want to tell you that there is a presence that will come around you because He has to come where He is magnified. He has to step into that room. He has to step into that atmosphere when you just say, thank you, Jesus. You know when depression
creation surrounds you, when you say thank you to Him, when you glorify Him, the Bible says He comes and abides. Father, we give you praise. When you are weak, you just praise Him in your weakness. And as you praise Him in your weakness, the Bible says He will abide in our weakness and His strength will be upon us. Lord, we say thank you. We bless 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 you. Lord, I bless you, my God. I won't let the rocks cry out. I won't let the rocks cry out, my God. Lord, I don't let the rocks cry out today, my God. Lord, I won't let the person next to me praise you on behalf of me, my God. Today, these walls will not cry out, oh God, because I will cry out. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, church. Hallelujah. Lord God, we magnify your name. We magnify your name, oh God. Lord, the Lord is good and his love endures forever. Lord, you are good and your love endures forever. Lord, you are good and your love endures forever. Oh, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God. How beautiful is your dwelling place, oh God. Lord, better is one day in your course than a thousand elsewhere, my God. Lord, today it is better. Lord, today it is better. Lord, because I'm in your presence, my God. Oh, my God, my God, my God, my God. Elohim, Adonai, Jehovah, Jireh, Lord, you are my King of kings, oh Lord. Oh, you are all in all, my God. Church, help me, help me, help me, help me, help me. Yamando lo si yara bako sheta. Hey, amando raba shete ki abako. Hey, amando baba baba ka. Somebody needs to praise him. Somebody needs to reach out to him because this week it's been a tough one. But find it inside of yourself uh, when the devil begins to come against you. You just say, Lord, I know I'm going through hell right now. But Father, I choose today to lift up my voice and say, you are good. It might not look good to you right now, but as you begin to declare he's good, I want to tell you, you're going to begin to feel lifted in this place. Don't mind me, I'm just giving him sound. I'm just giving him praise. I'm just saying thank you, God. Oh my God, every spirit of accusation, oh God, that has been lifted up on behalf of my name, my God, tonight, my God, it shall be broken by the blood of the Lamb. Lord, I can't attack my God my God my God my God oh there's a grace tonight I don't know what there's a grace tonight and I just can't stop if you don't know what to do right now just say Jesus 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 Oh Jesus Jesus in my morning in my evening in my darkness Jesus 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 Yamando bala si anda ke Yamando baba ba si anda ke Yamando ra si anda ke baba baba ba si anda ke Hey Yamando ra la si ya ka Hey la mato ra sa ta ki ya ba Hey la mando si anda la
church just release that sound of incense. Worship, 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 worship. You're worshiping him with the fruit of your own lips right now. And just say, thank you, God. I know, I know you might be tired. I know you might be going through it. But can you find it within yourself to release a sound and a, a sweet incense before the king right now? Lord, we release that in the atmosphere, my God. We release an incense into the atmosphere. We release an incense into the atmosphere. We release strength into the atmosphere. Lord, where we are tired and we are weary, my God, we release an incense of strength, my God. Lord, in the name of Jesus, uh, we declare it in this atmosphere. Come on, declare it in this atmosphere. Oh, Rabasi my God, my God, tonight we just want to say thank you to you, my God. Lord, Lord, many are our troubles, but Lord, you have won it all, my God. So, Father, we just want to say thank you. Lord, there's nothing else we can say, Lord God, but just say thank you, my God. You are worthy to be praised. We honor you. We glorify you, Father God. Oh, when the enemy tries to shut our mouths up, Father God, Lord, I will yet praise him. Lord, when my soul is downcast, Lord, I remember David when he was surrounded by the enemies. And in the book of Psalms, he said to his soul, my soul, my soul, why so downcast within me? I will yet praise him. I want to tell you, your soul might be downcast, but as you begin to praise him, you command your soul to rise up in Jesus' name. You say, my soul, my soul, why are you so downcast within me? Who gave you that permission to be downcast within me? So I command you to rise up and praise your God. That is the authority, the power, and the anointing that you have. You can take control of your soul. It doesn't control you. You control it. And you've got to learn, as David spoke to his soul, he said, my soul, I command you to rise up. Come on. Exercise it right now. Speak to your soul. I don't know how you're feeling right now. Name that feeling and say, I command depression. What are you doing in here? Come out in Jesus' name. You speak to how you're feeling. If your soul is tired and weary, you say, why are you tired and weary? The Bible declares that those who are tired and weary come to me and I will give you rest. The Bible says, my soul, why are you so afraid? The Bible declares that perfect love casts out fear. I want you to understand that you can speak to your soul tonight. Remonda Bakasi Yanda, speak to your soul. Come on, speak to it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, rise up. Come on, tell it to rise up. Rise up. Rise up, my soul. Rise up, my soul. Rise up, my soul. Rise up, my soul. For I will yet praise his name. Rise up, my soul. For I will yet praise his name. Rise up, my soul. For I will yet praise his name. Yes, come on, let's clap our hands and let the King of Kings know that he's worthy to be praised. Yes, oh God. Oh, Jesus, come on, you can take your seats in the presence of God. Isn't God good? I want to tell you that praising God is a powerful weapon. It is not just something we do to thank Him and glorify Him. I want to tell you that your praise is a sharp weapon. And I need you to understand, praise can give you life when you're on death's bed. Hezekiah was about to die. He had a prophetic word that was summoned to him in the book of Isaiah. And it came and said, you're about to go uh, and you're about to die. Hezekiah turned around to the wall and said, God, who can give you praise? And God granted him 15 more years so that he can give God more praise. Do you see how you get God's attention through praise? If you feel like uh, God is far from you, if you feel like you don't know what to do, get God's attention through praise. Tell your neighbor, praise him. 
praise him, get his attention through praise. And I need you to know, and I want you to understand that praise is a powerful weapon. I love it when the worship team praise God. Amen. I love it even more when Ade is doing it. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give it to Ade. Let's, let's praise God for Ade, yeah? Yeah, I know he just flew back from Ireland, so you must be tired. So we more grace to you, bro. Uh, I want to honor um, Pastor John and Mama P of the house. I want to thank you for inviting me and the eldership to speak. It's, I don't take this lightly. Um, I, uh, it's an honor for me to speak on this platform and share the word with you. Um, who's glad to be here tonight? Yeah? Pastor John is on his way. Uh, so make sure you pray for his protection and his ministry. So come on, let's just remember him right now. Can we just pray for him? Father, we release uh, Pastor John into your hand. Lord, I pray that the angels who are ministering around him, Father, will carry the flight um, safely. You'll take care of him. You'll watch over him. And Father, you will guide him and anoint him for the task that you have for him, Father God. So Lord, we thank you for Pastor John. We thank you for his family. We thank you for Mama P. Thank you for all that she does here, Father God. And I pray you will honor them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Let's turn to the book of Matthew, uh, chapter 18. I want to turn to Matthew, chapter 18. Um, and I want to speak to you and just encourage you uh, through this teaching. Um, when I come here, I like to teach you so that it just takes you a little bit deeper. I want to speak to you on the subject uh, of the power of relationships. And I'm not talking, uh, this is not a rel relationship seminar. This is not anything like that. But I want you to understand uh, the power of relationships. Um, and once we get hold of this understanding of the person next to you and the power uh, that the person has um, beside you, as a virtue of relationship that you have with them, there is a power that is endowed upon your life because of the relationships that you have. Amen? Um, so turn to your neighbor and say the power of relationship. The power of relationship. When God made us, he didn't make us to be on our own. He didn't. Um, there is, uh, it is an unbiblical um, mindset when you say, I don't need anybody. You know, when you were growing up, you think you were super spiritual, right? When you were younger and like, yeah, I don't need anybody. I just need God. Can I just tell you that's just a lie from the enemy to isolate you so he can constrict you and take the life out of you. Because anything that enemy wants to do in your life, what he will do is he will begin to isolate you and move you away from people. If he can move you away from people, he can weaken you. And when he can weaken you, he has the ability to constrict you and to take the very life that you have out of you because God did not make us to be on our own. When God made the heavens and the earth, he said everything was good except one thing. Which was, he said, it is not good for man to be alone. It is not good for man to be alone. Okay, so when he said it is not good for man to be alone, he made Eve. And Eve became the companion of Adam. And you know the story. They began to uh, populate and multiply and take dominion over the territories that he, uh, he gave them. But... Do you need to understand that although the command was taken to take dominion over the fish of the sea, the beast of the field, and the birds of the air, it happened as a virtue of a relationship that he had with Eve. He didn't just give it to Adam, he gave it to both. And together they were to subdue what was handed over to them by God. And it came as a result of relationships. And so when you begin to think that you can be on your own and survive, I want to tell you, you are foolish. You're foolish because you don't understand and we don't understand that actually God has given us people so that we can stand strong. So we can stand strong. So there is power in relationships. 
And the reality is, is that sometimes we don't understand that power. But the enemy does. And because the enemy understands that power, what he tries to do is he tries to bring enmity between man and man and man and woman and woman and woman. Do you know what? Like he begins to bring a asunder between our relationships so that he can bring us to a place of bitterness, of anger, of brokenness. Most of the things that we are dealing with in our lives is because there has been a breakdown in relationships. It's been a breakdown in relationships. Some of us are struggling and taking and carrying trauma because someone hurt us, rejected us, abused us, dejected us, and, and, and used us and manipulated us. And we are dealing with the backlash of those things in our lives because it's a relationship that made that thing happen. When you look at the Ten Commandments, the Ten Commandments is all to do with relationships. Just, there are over 690 odd, um, 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 sorry, I was, obviously when you come in the morning and you're preaching all day, your mind is like, uh, so forgive me. Um, there are over 600 laws in the Bible, but these, just these 10 commandments that God gave, do you know that they're actually relational laws? That thou shalt not covet, thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not... Uh, be jealous, you know, he said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul. And all those laws that God gave us, the Ten Commandments, I'm just looking at, they are actually relational laws. So sin, it's not something you do bad. <laughs> if you were to define sin, I would define it as breakdown in relationship. Because when there is a breakdown in relationship, we are in a position to hurt someone or to be hurt. There's a reason why I'm talking about this, because in order for us to now engage in what God wants us to do, we need to understand the power of relationships. Jesus says to love your enemies, because he understands that relationships are very important. And the reason why we have to love our enemies is because if we hate our enemy, we put ourselves in prison. So he said, love our enemies, not because he wanted us to have be lovey-dovey. He also wanted to teach us to keep us out of prison. It was for our freedom that he said, love your enemy. It's not to do with, it's not just to do with the fact that, uh, you know, feeling of love and all that kind of stuff. No, no, no. There is a reason why he said, love your enemies, because he wanted to keep you in freedom. It was for freedom he set us free. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. There is power in relationships. So if you think that you can live your life carrying bitterness, anger, unforgiveness towards your brother or your sister, I'm telling you, you are mistaken. You can cry out all you want, you can come on your knees for five, six hours, but if you're holding something against your brother, and if you are struggling with someone in church, in your family, in your friendship circle, I am telling you there is a limit that you have put on your life. And I'm here to speak on this because I know that some of us want freedom, some of us want deliverance, some of us want certain things to happen in our lives, and it comes down to a simple fact that there is something that is limiting us and is usually down to this aspect of relationship. There is power in relationships. And so because the enemy understands this, he begins to attack your marriages. He begins to attack your um, parent and um, um, children relationship. There seems to be so many things happening these days. 50% of marriages, it says that it breaks down. And it's even the same rate even in the church. You know, there are relation um, breakdown, there's murders happening all over the place, there's um, all sorts of stuff taking place because the enemy wants to break down relationship. In fact, because of the breakdown of relationship, we are building up a society where there are fatherless children. Because if the enemy can remove those connections, he can attack the next generation. The power in relationship. Matthew chapter 18, are you guys there? Let's go to Matthew chapter 18. Hallelujah. Is everyone good? 
Yeah, okay, tell your neighbor, the power of relationship. Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18. Verse 19. Matthew chapter 18 and verse 19. If you're there, say amen. amen. It says, again, everyone say again. again. I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them, power in relationship. This is in the context of prayer. It's in the context of prayer, but it's also in the context of, in verse 15, moreover, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he hears you, you have gained your brother. This is about forgiveness and about getting on with the person next to you so that when you come to a place of binding and losing on earth, and losing in heaven, you are in a position for it to be activated because you don't have any enmity between your brother and your sister. So when you have a prayer meeting and you're binding and losing, but then there is a disconnect with one of your brothers and you know there is, and it's not a feeling. Like, it is not a feeling. It is, it is a action that you have. It means you can be in the same And I know you guys think this is hard, but actually... Forgiveness is actually not human, it is divine. And so you need the Spirit to teach you how to forgive. I'm not saying being forgetful, but I'm saying it doesn't alter your behavior. Because if a person causes you to alter your behavior, it means they had the ability to kind of conform you because of something that happened to you. So some of us are not getting into relationship, romantic relationship, because your boyfriend hurt you. And so now your talk is like all men are the same. No, all men are not the same. All men that you go for are the same. And so now you have prophesied and spoken over your life and you said, you know what, I will never put myself in that position. And now you're praying to God, saying, Lord, I need a man in my life. I'm ready to get married or Lord, I need a woman. I'm, I'm ready to get married. But because of the hurt that came to you through your previous relationships or you went through a breakup or you went through adultery or they cheated on you, you are so hurt with yourself that you don't want to put yourself in that position. You don't have anything against them, but they have hurt you and bruised you. And that bruising has conformed your ways of how you relate to one another. Now you have a self-fulfilling prophecy. I don't need a man. I don't need a woman. And now you're hitting 30s and you're like, God, where are all the good men? Where are all the good women? Because we have allowed our negative experience of what happened in that relationship to dictate every other relationship. Some of us are in relationships and we are married to, 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 to Michael, but you're still bound up to John. And so there are issues in your marriage, not because of Michael, but you see Michael as John. And so when Michael does something, it reminds you of John. And so you have your guard up and then you react to Michael like you wanted to react to John. So you slap up Michael because you didn't do it to John. And now your marriage is struggling. Some of you are married to Shanice. But you're still stuck with, <laughs> let me just, Shanice, okay, Rebecca, <laughs> and Rebecca left you by the side, she went to cheat on someone, or she treated you somewhere, or she used to speak to you a certain way. And so now you're with Shanice and you're married to Shanice and you're good and you have an argument and she says something that triggered what Rebecca used to say. And so now Rebecca is controlling your marriage 
because you're still angry with Rebecca and we're dealing with stuff in our marriages because we got ourselves into relationships and connected with people that the assignment was to affect your destiny. And we have to be so careful when we are young and you're raising up children. And you know, I'm a Sri Lankan. I didn't grow up in the UK. I was born in Sri Lanka. I came over here when I was seven or eight years old. If I ever, if I ever bought a girlfriend at the age of 13, my mother, so I just switched it up a little bit. Forget my mum, my dad. We don't get naughty steps in Sri Lankan household. We always carry a belt. No social workers. Oh, you're a social worker. Well, I, I, I haven't got trauma. I used to get disciplined with love. There's a, there's a difference, right? Um, there is no way I'm coming to a house and mum and come meet my girlfriend. Nah. <laughs> My boy is 14 years old. He, you know, he's, a, he, he's, he's good looking, so he gets a lot of attention. And, but he knows. He got no interest. But his friends, you know, they got, like, one of his friends got, I said, darling, if you ever come to this house and says you got a girlfriend, I'm telling you, I'm breaking your legs. And I'm going to run the car over you just to make sure it just look like it's an accident. <laughs> I love that thing. But do you know what I mean, right? Because I understand at the age of 13, you are not emotionally ready to get into a relationship. And when they get married, they're dealing with 13-year-old <sighs> uh, Sasha. And when, she, when my boy gets married to someone, I don't know, I'm going to, I don't know. Uh, when she gets married to a Sri Lankan girl. <laughs> sorry, my wife's fully Caucasian, so. <laughs> when he gets married to a Sri Lankan girl, I said this with Jess, he's like, take it easy. Um, um, gets married, he's dealing with something that a 13-year-old girl did to him. Because he's not emotionally ready. He's not emotionally ready. So can I tell you, British people, and you have kids, they could only start dating when they can buy their girlfriend their own gift with their own money. And that's not happening until they start work. I tell you why, you will save a lot of issues for your kids. This is not a cultural thing. This is actually wisdom. We are seeing so many children engaging in sexual activity, younger and younger. The marriages are breaking up. Do you not know? It's because we used to allow our kids to get into relationship too early. And so when they get into a real relationship, they're dealing with all the demons that they've met before. And it's all coming into the marriage. And now marriages are breaking up because you've got Rebecca, Shaniqua, Shanice, Shasa. Um, all the S's that you can find in the world. And they're all coming in to this lovely marriage that we got into with John and Michelle. Do you, are you guys, there's power in relationships. In other words, it has the ability to empower you or to dethrone you. And so the enemy will bring people into your lives to, to, to dethrone you from your position. Now you're trying to do the destiny of God, but you are coming to the past and say, my husband is struggling. Or my wife, you know, she wants me home. But they are not destiny partners. Because what you went through impacted on the kind of person that you wanted to get in relationship with. And I'm talking about marriages, but it applies to every area of your life. Because if you connect with the wrong people, their assignment is to dethrone. When I pray for my children and we do a dedication service, I don't just pray for them. I pray for every friend that will come into their life. 
I pray for every teacher that will teach my children. I pray for every ungodly bullying um, spirit that will come over and around my children because their plan is to dethrone them from their destiny. And some of us are 40 years old, but you're dealing with something that happened to you when you were um, 14 years old. And you think you got over it, but you have to do a self-examination. Lord, why do I act like this? Lord, why do I behave like this? Lord, why am I still in the same position and the same thing happens over and over and over again? Can I suggest to you, there is a leak in your life. And so there's power in relationship. And here the Bible says that again I say to you that if one of you get together and ask, will it happen? No. It says if two or three get together, you begin to pray. The Bible says, I will be there in the midst. In other words, when me and you agree in our relationship, we generate an atmosphere where God comes into our midst and he begins to do what we ask for. Why? Because together we generate power. A house divided against itself, who can survive that? Jesus understood this. God understood it. In fact, even the devil understands this. And so he organizes his kingdom and he gets people to work together for one purpose. And so we know that there is power in relationship and the enemy will do anything to break you down. Tell your neighbor, the enemy will not do so in Jesus' name. Come on, come on, come on. You need to know the person that you're sitting next to could be your destiny partner. They can open doors for you that you've been fighting to open for so long. They can close doors that you've been trying to close for yourself. You know if you're struggling with addiction, depression, anxiety, and all of these madness um, and mental health, the, 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 the best thing to do is to be around people. It's best thing to do is because we know that there is power in relationships. There's power in the connections that we have around you. Don't just talk about it. We have to uh, willfully and by choice find the people that we need to be around. So that we can grow together and we can empower ourselves to do what God has called us to do. Some of us are struggling because we have wrong relationships around us. Amen? There's power in relationship. When two or three are gathered together in my name, I will be there in the midst of them. Hallelujah. Okay, Daniel chapter 11. I want you to know there's a guy called Theodore Roosevelt. He was a president of the United States uh, of Great America. The most important single ingredient in the formula of success is knowing how to get along with people. He, he, he said this because if you're ever going to be successful, business, marriage, anything, we've got to learn how to get along with people. You know, as a church leader, like, that's something you have to do all the time. Because the kind of stuff that we, we, we have to deal with or like, you know, our families are always, you know, uh, uh, under attack or they say, oh, pastor didn't do this or the pastor, the leader didn't do that or or, you know, you missed this pastor, or you didn't say thank you to me here, or... You, you know all of that talk, right? I mean, if I was bad, I can, like, just... Just not even answer their calls, right? But if I'm going to operate in power, I have to walk in forgiveness every single day. I have to walk in forgiveness. And you know how you do this? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you, you know the Bible says... To think of yourself more lowly than your brother. The reason why we carry unforgiveness in our heart or we carry these bitterness and anger and hurt because we think we're better than them. There's an, there's an area of pride in our life that because they hurt us, do you, know, do you know who I am? And we have this thought in our heart and it begins to offend us. And when it offends us, we, we carry this bitterness if you're not mature enough. And if, if we carry this hurt and we carry this bitterness and we think they need to apologize to us before you can actually have a relationship with them. But the Bible says we have to forgive them. If your brother sins against you, he says seven times. In fact, seven times 
77. You have to forgive. That's a lot of time that you need to forgive somebody. But the best way to do that, don't think of yourself that high. The person next to you think that they're better than you. And when you begin to think that, when they say certain things, the only reason why you had the ability to offend me and you had the ability to attack me and hurt me is because I stand on a pedestal and, I, and I, I'm in the right on the firing line of it. But if I say, let me lower myself, anything you say will go over me. Are you with me? And so if we are struggling with unforgiveness, bitterness, and all sorts of madness in our life, can I suggest to you there's an area of pride in our life that we need to say, God, humble me. Yeah, I know they hurt you. Yeah, I know they abused you. Yeah, I know you went through madness. But do you know that if you don't forgive, our Father in heaven won't forgive us? It's a difficult teaching. But it's actually spiritual concept. For us to learn and to take hold of. If you're going through some matter, you need to get counseling. Some of us need to go through therapy. Some of us need to talk to our pastors. Some of us just need to have inner healing so that we can actually come to a place to forgive the one that really hurt us. Some of you guys are just carrying unforgiveness because you're just... Yeah, you're just hard work. But there's some of us who are genuinely carrying hurt and pain because you've been abused. Because someone used their authority and manipulated you to do stuff that you shouldn't have been doing. And they did that. And, and, and you are rightfully in that position. But God get, forgave us by setting an example and so, so that we can come to a place to forgive. Forgive, forgive, forgive. So, so in Daniel chapter 11 verse 32, listen to this. He says, the northern king will use lies and smooth talking to trick those who quit following the holy agreement. So they will sin even worse. But those who know God, relationship. But those who know God, in other words, not just know because of his name, not know because of what he's done, not know because he's a you know, famous guy and everybody knows about, but know God on a personal level. And it says here, and obey him will be strong. They will fight back. In other words, some versions say they will do great exploits. Why? Because they know their God. They know their God. The power of relationship with God is that when you know your God, you begin to be strong and you begin to do great exploits in the midst of accusation. Look at this. Northern king will use lies and smooth talking. But because you know your God, you know that it's a snake that's trying to smooth talk you so they can veer you from God so that you begin to not know him the way that you should know him because now there is an assignment over your life with this Babylonian spirit that we're actually living under now and they make you feel now, did God really say that you can't be anything you want to be? Did God really say that you can't be a woman if you're a man? Oh, I'm going to get into trouble. This goes out. Did God really say that you can't be anything you want to be? Come on, the devil is a liar. They will send northern king. Did God really say that this is not love? Love is not a feeling, guy. <laughs> love is not a feeling. Love is, tell your neighbor, love is not a feeling. I'm sorry to let this. Let this slip out. Love is not a feeling. Love was a... That's why we're all over the place because we think love is a feeling. Yeah. You got married because you love the person. And some of us broke up. Now we ended up in divorce. Where's the love gone? Because love is a person. And once you get to know this person, you begin to move in love. Love, you don't... Get, love... Is not a feeling. In fact, you know that feeling you get when you're with your girlfriend and you, and you first get together? You know when me and Nick, we first get together, we can just talk on the phone for hours. Now Nick is complaining like I don't talk to her. We've been married for 17 years. But I remember we would talk to each other. We'll go to bed like 5 o'clock or 4 o'clock. I don't know what we're talking about. I think we even read the Bible to each other. Yeah, let's read through Lamentations. Uh, 
and we're sleeping and we got lectures at seven, uh, eight o'clock in the morning and you know we're going with the adrenaline of that love because that love that you're feeling in that years is actually a chemical reaction in your body yeah that girl them that she likes me you know, that, that, that guy, he likes me, you know? And then you get this butterfly feeling, you know? And you, listen, you don't need Red Bull when you're in love. <laughs> because that chemical that's in your body, that Red Bull is trying to give you that kick. I'm telling you, you get that with your girlfriend and your boyfriend because you feel that. Anyone, you, you know what I'm talking about, yeah? Yeah? And if you don't, I pray that you'll find it in Jesus' name. <laughs> Nick, <laughs> Nick literally says, you don't talk to me anymore. I said, darling, what is there to talk about? <laughs> um, God is good, amen? amen? But those who know their God and obey him will be strong. I want to tell you, when you're in the right relationship, it gives you strength. Some of us are weak because we have people around us who are sapping your energy. And so we need to learn to kind of slowly moonwalk backwards it's not like i'm not into this like cutting people out of your life i'm not i don't think that's very um healthy there are there are people maybe it's not healthy like yeah see you later maybe i'll see you in a few years time but you need to step back sometimes and actually get into a circle that will allow you to grow because there's power in relationship when two or three you can't do this on your own two or three gathered God comes into our midst, and if you've got jokers around you who are there for you to have a downfall, then you need to change your circle and get into around people. But those who know their God, you need to get to know your God. Because when you get to know your God and you begin to do what he says, because when you know about him, you're not really going to listen to him. Because your relationship, the proximity between you and him is kind of distant. So it doesn't really matter of what, what God is saying. You just want him to know that you follow him on Instagram. So now and again, you'll like his picture. Now and again, you'll put a message and say, ah, oh, yeah, fire. <laughs> because you want to grab his attention, maybe God will follow you back. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Do you, do you, yeah, so you're, you, you, you treat God like Instagram. You know him. You see what he's doing. And you're like, yeah, yeah, I know him. Look, 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 look. He liked my picture. But those who know their God, you begin to have a relationship. And you can begin to commune with him. And when he speaks to you, you act as a virtue of relationship because you love him. Those who love me will obey my command will obey my command. And so you have to come to a place to know that you have to begin to love him and know him on a personal level because you will do um, a great exploit. So relationships that generate power are godly relationships. And relationships that are ordained by God, that are in the will of God. Relationship, they produce power. The enemy is afraid when you are with someone who connects with you, not just on a, on, a, on a physical level, not just on a soul level, but spirit to spirit. Yeah. Because if you can connect with someone spirit to spirit, you have the ability to transcend the reality that you are in and able to invoke the realities of the spirit realm into a place that you are in. So the Bible says in Philippians, are you guys following me? So the Bible says in Philippians that... Those who are anxious, do not be what? Do not be anxious for, for anything. But prayer, but, but by prayer and petition and with thanksgiving, offer up your request to God. Now, some of us think that we just thank God in times of anxiety and it's going to go. And some of us think we should pray and, and begin to pray and it goes. No, but there's a third element, which is the word petition. And in a petition, you have to have a piece of paper and you have to go to every single person in your circle and in your connection and get them to sign if they agree with you. And when you get enough signatures in your paper, you take it to Downing Street or you take it to your counsellor 
who has the authority to go into the house of commons and begin to bring it as a subject to the house of the lords so that they can bring a law or they can deal with that because there is enough signatures on the petition to bring it to the attention of the courts. So do not be anxious for anything means by prayer and petition. So you can pray, but you need to say, bro, I need your help. Sis, I need your help. Church, I need your help. And you begin to petition and say, can you pray for me because I'm anxious. So not only are you praying, you have a body, a church who's praying with you. And as they begin to pray, you begin to thank him. I want to tell you there's power in relationship. Because how do you overcome anxiety? By prayer and petition and with thanksgiving. Are you guys learning? Yeah? Tell your neighbor, this is good. This is good. Um, and so, so, so there is power when we come together. So petition, when two or three are gathered together, ask and it shall be uh, done for you. If you bind it on earth and lose it on heaven, it will happen. Do not be anxious for anything. Uh, those that know their God, I'm giving you scriptures so you guys know the power of relationships, okay? Because the enemy knows this. Um, and so you got to get to know God. You got to get to know one another. If there's areas that are broken in yourself, you have to understand it's time to put them back together again. And I'm not saying be best friends with them, but what I'm saying is let them go. Some of the people that you're struggling and it's still affecting your life and your behavior and your psyche, they're buried six foot under. Your mother's dead, your father's dead, your uncle's dead, and they're the one that hurt you. But you're still angry with what they did. Some of us are raising our kids as a result, in a way, as a result of the pain that you experienced as a child from your parents. And we're raising our kids. I will never do this to my kids like my dad and my mom did. But what you don't understand is that you're raising them through pain, not through love. And so now they grow up and they're starting to behave a certain way. I said, God, did I not treat them like... Because you didn't raise them with love, you raised them in fear. That you will make the same... Listen, the spirit realm is not a joke. They don't look at your behavior. They go right to the source of where it's coming from. And some of us are struggling with our kids because you didn't want to do it like your parents did it. And you wanted to protect them from your pain. And so you avoided disciplining them because you had bad discipline. You never learned the right way to discipline. So you didn't discipline them at all. You went the opposite direction. Now they're not disciplined and they're loose cannon. Are you, are you with me? Right? So this is why relationships and learning to, learning to see where something is coming from is very, very important. And so God begins to teach us this. Um, and begins to uh, show us certain things. Right, there are four things I want you to know when you think about relationship. Um, the first thing I want you to do is that relationship, it produces power, right? And in the New Testament, there are four different words that I want you to understand. Power is as a result of relationship. Authority is as a result of a position. Okay, so I, I, I want you to just differentiate that. Power and authority is completely different, okay? You have power as a virtue of a relationship, which I'm going to explain, but authority comes because of your position, right? Because when you move into a place where you have influence, what happens is you can be a leader and not be there, but people do it even when you're not there. But when you have positional leadership, what happens is that you listen to your leader while he is present. But when he is not present, you do your thing. You do whatever you want. One example is your job. When, okay, I'm not going there. When the manager, let me go there. When the manager's not there, you slow down in your work. When he comes, <laughs> you start acting like you're working. But when he wasn't there, you were talking to your mandem on the corner. And thinking, yeah, 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 yeah. And they see him and you're like pretending to clean the side. 
Because they are based on positional leadership. They are not based on relational leadership, which is influence. And so when a leader has influence, he cannot be there, yet have power, and yet have influence because you have relationship with him. And if you don't do what you're supposed to do, it will not only affect you, but it will affect the whole community because of what you don't do. Because it's an influential relationship rather than a positional relationship. Right? And so, so you have to understand the difference. So the first one I want you to understand is this word called dunamis. Dunamis. Everyone say dunamis. dunamis. So dunamis is the inherent power or power resulting in a thing by virt virtue of its nature or which a person or a thing exerts and put forth. So dunamis is something that you have inside of you. Okay, and it is given, and the Bible uses this, and it comes as a relation, as a as a as a result of a relationship that you have with the person who puts it inside of you. Okay, and listen to this, uh, Mark chapter five verse thirty. It says, "And Jesus, perceiving in himself that power had gone out of him, immediately turned about in." The crowd and said, who touched my garments? In other words, this woman with the issue of blood came and touched Jesus. And the Bible says that dunamis power went out of him. It is an inherent power that you carry. And so the enemy realizes that when you are in perfect communion with one another, just as Jesus was, and when you are in perfect connection with your Father in heaven, there is an inherent power that you carry. And if the enemy can attack that power, he can take away the power that flows from you. And so when people come around you, they are not receiving that healing power, but they are getting that bitterness that you're carrying. And so now bitterness attracts bitterness. And now you have people who are confirming how you are, fe how you are feeling. But you need to find people who will confirm the thing of God that is inside of you. When you are bitter, angry and unforgiving, you come to a place where you find other bitter people. This is spirit. And it's like, have you ever been there? I've been there. When you've been hurt by a leader, when you've been hurt by somebody, you somehow gravitate some sort of way. I don't know what it is. It must have a magnet. I just get attracted. And they have the same issue as I have with that person. And now you're like getting together in the evenings and having dinner together and you're laughing and you're joking and all of a sudden that conversation comes and say, yeah, I know. Yeah, that guy, bro. He's long, man. Yeah, yeah, Pastor John, you know Pastor John. You know, and, and you begin to have these, um, these meetings, you know, and you begin to gossip while bitterness attracts bitterness. And it begins to sap that inherent dunamis power that you carry if the enemy can do that he can kill off the power that's happening inside of you because he's scared of it he's scared of the power that because if you knew who you were and the relationship you have got you'd be walking down the street someone touches you and they experience the power of god they get delivered and healed but when they touch you they hear your bitterness when they touch you they hear your unforgiveness when they touch you they hear your hurt when they touch you you hear and they, they confirm the accusations that are coming from your mouth and the hurt that is coming from your uh, voice. And they confirm it and they solidify it. Because when two or three agree on a thing, it shall be established. We look at it in God's way all the time. But actually, it also works the opposite way. So what witches will do, sorry, they'll get together. And they put little things together and they talk about it. And you invoke a curse through the words and agreements. So when two or three get together, there is power that begins to flow. Not if you bind stuff on earth and lose stuff. The enemy will also use the same principle. These are spiritual laws that are used not only by believers, but also by soothsayers. The demonic realm, they do these things because they can bring an accusation against you. 
dunamis. Don't let the enemy take the dunamis out of you because God, God has given you that. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 13, you can write it down. It says, for thine is the kingdom and the power, the dunamis power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead is also in you. That's the dunamis power, bro. Because that, 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 that spirit, whatever is dead in your life, will come back to resurrect. Everything else that will come, it will close you. I don't know who you're struggling with. I don't know who you need to forgive. But you need to come to a place where you need the dunamis power. Everyone say dunamis. Dunamis. The second, the second one I wanted to remember is a word called dunatos. Dunatos. To be able to do something mighty, excelling in something, having power for something. Okay, did you get that? Yeah, so do, do not toss is to be able to do something mighty or excelling in something or have a, having power to do something. In other words, whenever you feel like you have a vision or when you have something that you need to do, you need, a inertia, you need an initial power to set you away. But some of us, our dreams and our visions have been shattered because somebody said, what are you talking about? And it sapped that do not toss power and you now don't have that strength anymore. Do you remember Samson? He was by the pillar. He lost his strength. He said, Lord, give me one more time where I can push the pillar to side. Because he had, the, he had the power and the ability to do it because he was able to do it through the help of God. Dunatos is the ability to do something as a result of someone empowering you to do it. Relationship, dunatos, dunatos. So the, the fact that you can pass, do your business... You can't do it on your own. Do you know that every success is in your life is connected to someone in your life? You know, uh, Snoop Dogg will say, I want to thank me. You know, I want to thank me for not giving up. I want to thank me for... You know, there's a truth to that, but Snoop Dogg never got there on his own. There was a recording artist next to him. There was a producer next to him. There were uh, uh, um, writers who were around him. He was just the voice. So this, I want to thank, is a good meme. But it's not actually true. He never made it to where he made it on his own. Dunatos. Dunatos is the ability that you have been given to do something, to start a business, to start a ministry, to go to school, to finish university, to do all of that kind of, it comes from within, do not toss. The enemy would want to take that away. Are you guys with me? Okay. The, 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 number three. I've got one more and then I'm done and then we're going to pray. Number three. The other word that's used in the New Testament, and some of you would have heard this word, is the word exousia. Everyone say exousia. Okay, who's heard of this word? Just double check in. Yeah, exousia. Exousia is the ability or strength with which one is endowed. It doesn't come on its own. You have been endowed with it. It means you have been given it. Okay? Um, which he either he or she either possesses or exercises. And this exousia power is also a judicial power. You use this to cast out demons. You use this to be able to understand that you are a child of God and you have positional authority. Because of the position you have as a child of God, you have exousia power. And so when you wear the, when you wear the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is inside of you, Every demon in hell recognizes who you are because you have a uniform on. And that uniform is not Pastor Keith Bandara, it's not Ade, it's not uh, Nicola Bandara, it's, it's none of you, it's actually Jesus Christ. So when the Father sees you, he doesn't see you, he sees what Jesus did on the cross for you. And so your sins become forgiven. And so when you come face to face and casting out and working in uh, deliverance, you need to understand they don't see you. It's not because of you. It's because of God inside of you that uh, some of us, when we begin to get into these ministries, we think it's the anointing that we carry. It is the anointing you carry, but it's actually Jesus they see. 
It's exusia. It's like a police officer, when they're in their uniform, you fear him. It's like when you're driving a car and you see a police officer, he's, stuck, he, he's by the side of the road and he goes like this. You're going to stop. Why? Because you recognize the uniform. If you drive past him, as much as you want to drive past him, and you are going to get into trouble. But if the same police officer didn't have his uniform on, he stood by the side of the road and he's trying to stop you, 95% of the time you are going to drive by. Because we live in the UK. I was going to say some faces, but I'm not going to say it. Do you understand? We're just going to drive by because they don't have the uniform on, so we don't recognize the authority. So I want you to know that if you take your uniform off, your authority is not recognized and there's no judicial power. But in order to in, in, empower you with the exusia power, you have to also know the constitution. The constitution is the word of God. And so when you begin to pray, you have to understand there's a dimension of prayer where you enter the courts room of heaven. And in the courtroom of heaven, you can't be doing no begging when there is a prosecutor who is an accuser of the brethren. You've got to become a lawyer in the realms of the spirit. And so when the enemy comes in like a flood... The Bible declares in the book of Isaiah that he will raise up a standard. So you remind God of his word and say, in fact, in this constitution, in Isaiah, duh, 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 this is what it says. And so what you're saying to me does not apply. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 12, when the accuser of the brethren come against you, you overcome him by the blood of the lamb. And the word of his testimony. And so when there are things happening in your life that you are praying and nothing is happening, it has moved to a dimension of the courtroom. And you've got to recognize when certain things haven't been happening in your life or your prayers haven't happened, it's not just about praying at the dimension of friendship or fatherhood. You have to go to a judicial realm and you begin to apply judicial law through the avenue of prayer. So there are times where we pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. That's a fatherhood prayer. There's a friendship prayer that you have to recognize where you go. Where you, who would go to a friend and you ask for uh, a bread, he will give you, give, you a, give you a stone. You know that verse. Well, that is also a, a, a model for prayer, but from a friendship mode. But there is a mode where Jesus taught the disciples about the persistent widow who kept on going to the judge. Who kept on going to the judge. This is a judicial type of prayer where you have to remind in the courts of law where your accuser of the brethren is and begin to pray and say, by the blood of the lamb I overcome your accusation. And the word of his testimony. And this sometimes does it straight away because you've understood, I need to go to the courtroom of heaven. And so prayer begins to happen at levels you need to understand. Exousia happens because Jesus has given you that authority as a virtue of relationship. You can't use a formula for this exousia. Because the sons of Sceva tried to use the formula, but they got beaten up. Do you remember the story? They saw Paul doing it, and they seen Jesus doing it, and they saw some demons. And so the sons of Sceva went to cast out the demons. And the Bible says that they got beaten up and chased out of the house. And some of you are battered and bruised because you've entered a territory that you haven't given permission to enter. You've seen men of God and you've seen people do it and you thought, you know what, let me use the same formula. But you haven't been given the exousia jurisdiction to deal with that realm just yet. Anyway, God is good, amen? Matthew chapter 8 verse 9. I'm a man under authority having soldiers under me. I'm a man under authority. In other words, I'm a man under exousia. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, unto them, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven. And then we read later on Ephesians that power has been handed over to you and me. So we have the ability to use that power to bring about the kingdom of God. Because we are ambassadors of 
Christ. Are you, are you guys, yeah, you guys are with the last one and we're done. I'm going to send you. The last the word that is used is this word, to have power or be powerful or to get possession of. This word is what we call krateo. Krateo. Krateo, and I might be saying it wrong, it's K-R-A-T-E-O. You know these Greek words. Uh, when we did it, in, when I was doing theology and we did it, it was a madness. I only did like one semester and I thought this is enough. And then when I preach, I just use these words. It's hard work, kreto. But it's the same word, it's the same word used to take dominion. Dominion, take dominion. That's the other power that comes over you as a virtue of relationship. And it's to have power or be powerful or to get possession of. In other words, this power is used to take territory, but it comes because someone of higher power has given you the ability to take that Dominion. That's why God said to Adam and Eve, go and take dominion and subdue the earth. It's krateo power. Matthew chapter 9 verse 25. But when the crowd has been, bro, uh, help me out here. But when the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took her by the hand and the girl arose. At that time when Jesus healed that little girl, he took her by the hand. He was used taking dominion. He took power over death and pulled her up and said, live. Because he used that um, kreteo power, taking dominion over death. Because that's why he died for you on the cross. So that he can take authorities out of the keys um, of death from Hades and give you life and life in abundance. This is called taking dominion. You are called to take dominion. You are called to move in the dunamis power. You are called to have dunatos inside of you and you're supposed to walk in the exousia authority that God has given you. But who has offended you? Who has hurt you? Who has bruised you? That they, you are carrying unforgiveness in your heart. Because all of these things, you, you cannot come into a place of fruition if you are carrying hurt, bitterness and anger inside of you. So my challenge to you today after hearing the power of relationship is don't give the enemy a foothold. You've been disappointed in your ministry. You've been disappointed in your relationship. Some of you are struggling where you're struggling because you're living like somebody who hurt you before. You are living now because of yesterday. But I prophesy and decree over your life that you will live now because you have a tomorrow. And if you're going to set yourself free, you have to forgive your brother, your sister, your mother, your father, your dog, your cat, I don't care who it is, that horse kicked you while you were walking and you're still hanging with that horse. Check it. Some of you are so angry, like you have sleepless night and your blood is boiling sometimes when you think about them and how they hurt you. And while your blood is boiling, they're watching EastEnders and they're eating their dinner with their husband or their wife. And you are like going all crazy because of what they did to you. You know, when friends say, forget about it. You know, if you watch friends, you know, Matt, uh, what's his name? Uh, yeah, so forget about it. Don't wait for an apology. I don't know who needs to hear this. Someone's waiting for an apology. Someone's waiting for them to come to you and drop on their knees and say, I'm really sorry I did wrong. That may never come. If you're waiting for that, you're going to die a hurt, bitter, angry individual. Don't let your blood boil while you're eating and enjoying EastEnders. I know, I know you guys don't watch it. Set yourself free. And allow that power that comes through relationships Keep your account low. If you've got a notebook, take your notebook out, please. If you've got a phone, let's go to notes. I want you to write down every name that you think that you need to work on and forgive. Even as I'm speaking, even as we spoke, there are certain people that came to your mind. If this is not for you, you begin to just pray in the spirit. But if you know someone's hurt you, 
If you know you've been disappointed, you, you know someone cheated you, you know you gave them a thousand pounds or, or fifteen hundred, you gave them some money and they haven't given it back to you. And you're still angry with them. You're never going to get your money, you know this, but you are hurt. Write their names down. There was a time when I was, <laughs> went into business and it wasn't a lot of money, but my money got taken. And I have to watch my language because now I say, all oh, these people from this place, they're cheaters. Because I got cheated. I was so angry, I drove to the house. I went to company's house. I wanted to find out where they live. I drove, uh, I sent it to the point. Are they? Forgive me. I've got some friends that if I asked them, he said, yeah, bro, I can, I can go around, but I'm going to add some extra money on top of it to cover me. And all I have to do is say yes. But I said, no, Lord, because one day when I'm preaching, <laughs> hey, I'm a human, you know. I have these thoughts sometimes, you know. They think because you're a pastor, you don't know people. In fact, when you're a pastor, you know everybody. Because you know why sinners come and get saved in the house, right? So you've got drug dealers, prostitutes, gangsters, and all these people you get to know because you get a chance to, sometimes you just feel like using their old self. Even at church, even right now, I have one guy, he said, bro, like, if you ever need me, just give me a call. He's saved. He said, but I got you, bro. I have got you. I said, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remember that. I'm going to remember that. So I want you to know and write down names. Like, take this seriously. Because this is a practical application to what I'm preaching. I am not going to shalamanda and lay hands on you and pray for you. Because this is something that you need to do. You've got to send a text to someone say, how are you doing? You haven't sent a text to check on them because you're like, they never, they never text me. Or they never call me. They got my number. But every time I see them, oh, you haven't called me. Write down their name. Text them tonight and say, hey, I was thinking about you. You know, I hope you're well. It would be great to go out for a cup of tea or a coffee. If you've been the one that's bringing accusation and you're full of bitterness, maybe you need to call someone and say, you know what, bro, I did something wrong. Forgive me. Even if they don't say sorry to you, that's cool. Release yourself. Guys, life is too short for you to get mad at people like this. I know, I know some of us, like I said, I've been carrying like really demonic stuff, like demonic people who have like, I don't want to say demonic people, that's the wrong way of saying it, but people who are just evil, just abused you and done all sorts of stuff for you. But, but you still need to come to a place where you can work through this. Church, you have to do this. Because the Bible says that if you don't forgive, your Father in heaven won't forgive you. And now you're under the judgment of God and you don't know why nothing is working out for you. Because there's a judgment over you. So right now, two minutes, just take time. Just write it down. Write down those names. Just close our eyes and bow our heads and you begin to pray. I know usually when I'm here, we just go into a heavy time of ministry, but I, I need you to be reflective today. I need you to be reflective tonight. Because I'm here to tell you, fix up those relationships that need to fix up. I'm here to challenge you to say sorry if you need to say sorry. Like drop your guard, drop your pride. If you've been in a relationship and you've broken up in a certain way and you know you shouldn't have done it that way, bring them up. I remember leaving uh, a, a church um, when I was young. I was young, I was 16 years old, but I left the wrong way. I think I was about 28 years old. That was like 12 years later, I called him up. My hands were shaking and I said, you know what? Pastor, like, I'm really sorry. I was young. I left uh, in the wrong way. I just want to say I'm really sorry. Um, I was foolish and I was young. And I had to do it. I did it. And I was working, guys. Right? I was working. And the Holy Spirit put it on me while I was working. And I said to myself, if I don't go to the toilet and make this call, I'm not going to do it. So I left everything I was doing. My manager wasn't there, so I did walk away. Um, walk away. And I picked up the phone. And I was hoping he doesn't pick up the phone. I can just leave a message. He picked up the phone and I said, Pastor, I'm really sorry. Like I was young, 
I didn't do it the right way. I hurt you and I hurt your family. Will you forgive me? I release myself. I don't care what he did to me. I don't care what, how he spoke. I, I, don't care. I didn't care anything about that. I didn't get a sorry. I didn't really care. I just wanted to release myself. So come on, let's pray. Say, Father, areas in my life that I need to forgive, people I need to forgive, write down their names. When you begin to call them by name, say, Lord, will you bless them? And say, Lord, will you give me the strength to forgive them in this season? Because you're not going to finish 2024 with people you've been struggling with with since 2020, 2018, 2017. You are going to deal with it. If people are here in the church that you struggle with, you're going to fix those relationships just by saying sorry. I'm not telling you to be best friends. I'm telling you to fix those relationships and set the house in order. Set your life in order. You know, Mahatma Gandhi, he said this amazing um, quote. He said, like, um, forgiveness is like giving... Um, 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 drinking poison yourself and hoping that it will kill the other person. That's what unforgiveness is like. So come on, now is your time. Say, Lord, help me, give me strength. If this is not for you, you put it on ice because one day you're going to need it. Or you just begin to pray in the Spirit and, and pray for the person next to you who might be struggling with this issue. You've been abused. Some of you have been sexually abused. You've gone through some stuff. Some Your husband cheated on you or your, your boyfriend or your girlfriend cheated on you and it's hurt you. Uh, uh, as, a, as a child, your parents, they abused you or they treated you in a wrong way. Maybe your dad left you and you still are carrying unforgiveness. Maybe your mom said something in anger and now you're not doing well in your life because every time you try to progress, that word comes and reminds you that you're not good enough. It's time for you to let them go. Some of you got into relationship, they slept with you and they broke up with you. And now you're carrying the pain of those people who rejected you, not just on a relational level, but on a sexual level and on a physical level. It's time to let it go. There is power in relationships. And our, and our power is being sapped because the relationships that we're in now are being affected by those relationships that we've had before. Oh God, release your spirit, God, in this room. Release your spirit in this room right now, Holy Spirit. Let the love of Jesus begin to flow in this room, Father God. Lord, where we have been hurt, where we have been rejected. Father, where relationships have broken down, my God, will you release forgiveness in this room, Father God. Lord, I pray for strength over every single person in this room to be able to walk uh, into an atmosphere and just say sorry. Just, Lord, I pray that as a result of this, families will be, will be coming back together. Lord, some of us are not going to parties or, or Christmas gatherings because there is a member of your family who's there that you are angry with because of something that they did. It's time to release them into the hands of God. Let God take care of them. Let God take care of it. But today you must be free. You must be free because if you can't forgive, your Father in heaven cannot forgive you. Hallelujah. Come on, lift up your voice. Just pray. Come on. Come on, come on. Release it, release it, release it, release it, release it. And when you're ready, just stand to your feet and hold your hands up. But only when you know you're ready and you've been able to do that. Just stand to your feet and hold out your hands just about, just as if you're going to receive from God.
relationships that have been broken, every relationship that has affected us, Lord, give them the grace right now. Holy Spirit, give them the grace right now. overwhelmed by the pain that they've been carrying, but they'll be overwhelmed by your love. Lord, that they don't have space in them to hold the pain anymore because your love is beginning to fill them, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord, more of your spirit, Father God. Let spirit begin to flow in this place. Let your Holy Spirit begin to flow in this room right now, my God. Let love, God, let, let, let the love of God begin to flow in this room, my God. Father, we thank you that you first loved us. You first loved us, my God. Lord, you first loved us, Father God. We thank you, my Lord. You are amazing, my God. Lord, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your love. Holy Spirit, I pray over every single mind in this room that have been taken captive. Lord, with godless chatter. Father God, that every mind that has been taken captive with vain imaginations, my God. Lord, and it's imprisoned them in their own in their own thoughts, Father God. Lord, as your word declares in Corinthians, Father God, to arrest every thought that exalts itself above the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Tonight, my God, I pray for strength to arrest every ungodly voices, uh, to arrest every ungodly words, to arrest every vain imagination that is exalting itself above the knowledge of Jesus Christ. I arrest it in Jesus' name. I command those words that are lying to you, saying that you're not good enough, hearing the voice of your parents and your loved ones and your kinsmen. I pray in Jesus' name, we arrest it in the name of Jesus and we throw it and cast away the keys that it shall not come again. And I speak every spirit of destruction that has come over the lives of your children, my God, it will not take control in Jesus' name. Father God, every vain demonic imagination be broken in this room right now in Jesus' name and be set free. Be set free. Be set free. Be set free. Repeat this prayer after me. In the name of Jesus, I take authority over every thought that is causing me to bow down to the voice of the enemy. And I take captive every vain imagination and every lie in my mind in Jesus' name. It will not have any power over me. And so, Lord, today, I choose to forgive in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, let's stand to our feet. Everyone else, let's stand. I'm going to close tonight. But I want to leave it like this because I want you to go home. This is not... Where you have an experience, this is something we have to practically do. We have to practically do it. So when you go home, do what you have to do to set your table right. Do what you have to do to set your relationships right. And I'm not saying let's be best friends again, but I'm just saying set your account straight. Because tomorrow God can come back. You never know when he's going to come back. You never know when that person is going to die. And you say to yourself, I wish I sorted this out before he went or before she went. Church, I'm telling you, you're walking so much freedom if you have the ability to walk in love. Walk in love. And that means you have to be so low that when they're sending the offense, it won't touch you. Think of the person next to you higher than yourself, regardless of who it is. Amen? Tell your neighbor, God is good. Tell your other neighbor, he's been merciful to you today. Today, the message is about mercy over your life. 
because we're under heavy judgment and we might not be under judgment of people but we can be surely under the judgment of God and when we carry unforgiveness we are under the judgment of God we are and we have to release ourselves from that by having the ability to forgive and some of our prayers are not being answered because of unforgiveness in our lives because there are blockages to our prayer life and we've got to begin to deal with that amen Amen. Okay, I'm going to release you. Rachel, am, am I releasing them? Yeah? Okay. But when you go home, do what you need to do. Amen? Okay? And set your life right. And I'm going to uh, say the benediction. And it says, Now may the God of peace, who brought you up, our Lord Jesus from the dead, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you complete in every good work to do his will, working in you what is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ to whom be glory forever and ever and ever in Jesus name amen amen we would kneel him I release you uh, into God's grace this week I want you to go and be blessed grow in his grace and grow in his love and set your table straight this week amen amen come on let's give the lord a clap offering before you go make sure you hug someone you show them some love Give them, say it's so lovely to see you here today before you go yeah and make sure that they feel at home and god bless you guys